class is going to be not only about the licks, but also about uh, my concept of improvisation kind of woven in amongst all this material. So uh, let's just get into it. We're going to basically break it down into five positions. The G minor, the third fret area, the uh, fifth fret, up here in the uh, eighth fret area. Of course, our tenth fret. 12th fret area, and back up to the first position up here at the 15th. So one of the things that you want to do with, obviously with improvisation, is be familiar with soloing over G minor in all these areas along the neck. So we're really comfortable with this one, because we start out jamming with the minor pentatonic scale, and we also get really comfortable with this position up here at the 10th uh, fret. But sometimes we're a little sketchy in the 8th fret area, the 5th fret, or up here in the, the 12th fret area. But if we can tie all that together, then we can be seamless in our, um, our playing and just make much more musical sense uh, and not be so tied down to one uh, position. I'm kind of thinking around this minor pentatonic box. But I'm going to start here on the 5th, up to the 9th. But then I'll put a little tweak in there, maybe some chromaticism. Chromaticism is great from, uh, uh, as long as you're doing chromaticism uh, within a controlled environment, like you have this framework of the pentatonic, but if you're doing chromatic within that framework, it really makes a lot of sense because the outside note is, a, is part of the scale, the one you land on here is a part of the scale, same thing here. So. Those notes there make total sense because it's what I call, like I said, chroma uh, controlled chromaticism. So I'm thinking in this particular area of the pentatonic minor. So, and I'll throw in the the F sharp there, which is your uh, your major seventh. We have a G minor chord, right? We have the G minor major. So I'll often throw that in, more like a harmonic minor type of idea, as opposed to the Dorian, which sometimes I do. But I like this because it kind of rounds out the edge a little bit. Right now I want to start a line, and I'm going to play the arpeggio. Now I'm going to go to the ninth, half step into the root. So we have the arpeggio. Then I add this, and now I'm in, I'm in my second position. Now I can go anywhere I want in second position. So, the root of the fifth. So what am I thinking here? I'm doing this. I did the root to the fifth. Uh, let's see, I think I did this. Just moving, I can see those two notes are a part of my minor pentatonic scale. Right there. But I'm just seeing them from a different angle. So I'm going to go, and then I'm going to go down in and imply the related altered five chords. So that's something else we do with our minor seven improvs. We're playing, you're jamming along. just to get back into our G minor. So even if the keyboard player is just playing G minor or another guitar player is just playing G minor, you can still imply these altered dominant tonalities. So that's what I'm doing when I'm implying this, when I'm saying this. Because that, right here, is a D altered chord. So when I did this, like this that just weave in around all over the place, sometimes hitting random things, other times doing that but leading into uh, known entities like your altered dominant and what have you.